Hey guys, Adam the Paranormal Polynesian here. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name's Adam and I am a weird person that goes around and looks at weird stuff. So if you're interested in ghost hunting, haunted locations, travel, and doing home projects, cooking, sewing, dancing, plumbing, just kidding, I don't do any of that. No, but I live next door to a plumber, so does that count? same thing. Today we're going to do something a little different. Recently I was interviewed for a podcast by Cecil Fletcher of the Bipolar Teddy Bear podcast and um, it's an hour-long podcast just about things I've done in the past, haunted locations I visited, Skinwalker Ranch. It seems like everyone who interviews me wants to hear about Skinwalker Ranch lately. It's a hot topic. I'm just going to split this video podcast in half. It's an hour, so we'll play about 25 minutes of it today. And, you know, he was nice enough to let me use the footage. I do apologize. There's some issues with the audio. When he interviewed me, I was staying at the Flamingo in Las Vegas. And the, the room on this trip was haunted. There was something uh, wrong with the room. I don't know quite yet. I'll have to look at my footage from staying there. There were definitely weird things going on with the audio and Cecil says there was EVPs he might have caught and also visual things. So look out for those and see if you can see them. But again, thank you so much to the Bipolar Teddy Bear podcast and thank you to you for watching and being a subscriber and uh, I hope you enjoy. Teddy Bear. I'm Cecil Fletcher running it solo tonight with a special guest. And we got Adam. And Adam, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey guys, my name is Adam Taula. I live in a little town called Springville, Utah, which is about 45 minutes south of Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, I'm a singer uh, and an actor. I have a YouTube channel and I also am a paranormal investigator. Nice. So, a very colorful life. <laughs> it sounds like so you are a singer is that right i am yeah i just That's finished the show and uh hopefully doing another one this summer so that's really cool it's um been, it's been nice to finally get get back out and do shows since we haven't been able to for a year you yeah know? yeah so, that's true nice um me, me and uh the two other members of the cast that's usually on here We've all been playing music our whole lives, but we don't do anything with it. So that's the way it goes. Work for the man is what we do. Hey, I understand that. You should still do it. It's Follow fun. your passion. You yeah. got it. Even yes. if it's a garage at night. Oh, yeah, for sure. And um, so but what draws us to you is like we usually talk to people that we've talked to some people that hit the field and everything, but you – are in different location than we've ever actually got to go besides um caitlin is one of the people we speak with she lives around nevada okay. um so did when you got your start did you start as a believer in the paranormal or did you i've always had uh paranormal experiences my whole life so <clears throat> so that's always been a part of my life i just didn't know what it meant until i was an adult and was asked to work on some different teams um, and investigate because I wanted proof myself just so that I knew the stuff that I'd seen throughout my life wasn't just in my head. And it, it's not. I mean, 20 something <laughs> years later, I've seen plenty of stuff to, uh, you know, verify that. So, um, but I've always, yeah, I've always known there's something else out there going on around us. That's cool. I'm, I'm a firm believer in it, too. When I was younger, I used to go research a lot, and I've just never seen anything. Like, it was real disappointing. So you you said that you've had a lot of encounters. Was there anything, like, in particular when you was a kid or anything that was like, holy crap, this is really happening? 
thing when I was a kid, I used to see other children a lot in our house. And I would always think they were my brothers who were twins. And, and, and these things would almost mimic like what my brothers would look like, but it wasn't quite them. I never could see their eyes. Mm. But I would see um, people in the house to the point where my parents would put me in resource classes in elementary school because they thought I was gifted in other ways. So, it, yeah, it just turns out I was being haunted. My ghost. That's insane. Um, you said you couldn't yeah. see their eyes. Were they like the black eyed children in a way? Yeah. And they would be, um, they would always have hoods on, like hoodies. I remember that. And this was like ever since I was seven, I would see them since my brothers were born. So that is terrifying. Yeah. I, I'm a pretty big person. I'm like 6'4, I weigh like 370 pounds. Um, yeah. Yeah. and and the thought of little kids scares me to death especially in that form like just little black eyed children like I don't know like I, I, I'd like to think I'd, I'd fight a bear but if I seen a child like that I would <laughs> die of a heart attack instantly <laughs> yeah I kids already scare the shit out of me in general so ghost kids, that's like another special level. So not not for me. So like there's, no. something about, there's something about getting an EVP on an investigation of a of a child, you know, or or seeing a child in a photo. It's it's just there's something a little extra eerie about it. I for think. sure. I agree with you. I, I couldn't I couldn't handle it, man. I I will I will die. Please don't die. Are those <laughs> ghost kids with like it, doesn't that sort of originate out in your area? The black eyed children? Uh, I think they started more in like England, I think. Maybe oh. out. I'm not for sure. Uh, what I Kentucky swear I has heard is there was a place out in like Kentucky or maybe Illinois. Kentucky's more known for like goblins. Yeah, you got those in your cave systems out there, right? Yeah. In the tunnel. I'll call them hillbillies. I know it's kind of like a stereotype of Kentucky or whatever, but I live in like the hills of Kentucky. It's not really a stereotype um, because I used to ride four wheelers like quads, you know, a lot. Mm -hmm. And we go way back into the mountains and you just find a random shack with people living there that probably haven't came out. From you, it was it's terrifying. Like the Amazon, kind of. No, it that's, weird. It, it, it's like that here in Utah too. Honestly, you know, we love our outdoors and being secluded. We, you know, I think we have more preppers in Utah than in Texas. People, <laughs> people live, you know, to be separate out here. I think. Yeah, so, it's, it's possible. And just everybody's preparing for the preparing for the apocalypse. Then, yeah. Um, kind of happened. Yeah. So you said you're in Vegas and you're doing a. You just got done doing a show, did you? Um. Yes, back in Utah. But we just we just came out to Las Vegas uh, this morning to start filming more things for the channel. So, yeah, I'm still deciding what I'm doing. I have a I have a list of things to to try. So hopefully we'll get through them over the next few days while we're here. Yeah. I don't know a whole lot about Salt Lake City. The only thing I ever really known about it is from the movie SLC Punk. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Matthew, not a... I figured Matthew Lillard was probably a lawyer somewhere around there or something. <laughs> no, that's, um, yeah, that's how it was back in my days when I used to go to the clubs and stuff when I was a teenager. It was more like that, but I'm much older. Youth, man, it went by too fast. Damn it. Those twenties, they sneak up and they're gone just like that, y'all. Yeah. Your younger listeners better take heed. No, yeah. the first thing I remember being excited for was my license. And then I was excited to get to drink legally, which mm -hmm. I was drinking anyway. And then I was <laughs> excited about my insurance going down when I turned twenty five and now that I'm like thirty five, it's like what now? <laughs> you know, I think 
at this age, I, I'm right above you. I'm 38, going on 39, and I'm at that age where I'm just like, what now? What? <laughs> I'll do a YouTube channel, I guess. My midlife crisis. This is what I'm doing. That's so, pretty much what led me to this. Um, and plus the whole pandemic and everything. Where where you are and explore and you go around exploring everything for your channel has the pandemic really offset that a lot? Like, is that so, Salt Lake City off limits for the most part? You know, depending on where you are in Utah, the pandemic hasn't existed since it started. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> like nobody really cares. Um, but the nice thing about Utah is it's just a hotbed of paranormal activity. It doesn't matter where you are in the state. You can find something or a story or a location. You know, just where I live, you know, just last night we drove with, I can get anywhere within half an hour that's got a substantial story behind it. Just, you know, where I live, there's ghost towns everywhere in the state. You know, some that I haven't even seen still. And uh, just last night we went to a haunted mansion in a little town called Nephi, which is about 90 miles uh -huh. south of Salt Lake, and it was an old Victorian mansion, and we took a ghost tour last night. That was a lot of fun. Um, but there's just, there's so many stories um, out in Utah, um, and I think it, that's why it really hasn't affected it much, and a lot of it is stuff you can go do on your own by just driving for the day, which I love. Um, but but I'm, yeah, I, I kind of don't know because I took a break on this for years and just barely started back up during the pandemic. So um, I haven't noticed a lot of issues so far, but I mean, you can definitely tell there's a, a difference. But. You know, and this is what's strange to me, like you said there's a lot of paranormal stuff around your area mm -hmm. and where we come from, religion suppresses it a lot and more like southern baptists down here i figured that that religion stronghold that the mormonism has in that area that it would suppress a lot of paranormal, paranormal does it not you know um strangely i don't think so because i was raised in that religion until i was 20 19 20 which is the age most uh, guys go on a mission and i decided that wasn't for me um but i I remember growing up in my ward is what, what it's called, congregation, and we always would tell ghost stories. We always would have, you know, I was an active scout. I almost had my eagle. Um, and we would, we just loved that stuff growing up. It was never taboo or anything. And then me being Polynesian, that's just a part of my life and a part of uh, my family's life. We're kind of like with the Mexican culture um, and a lot of other cultures, you know, when you die, it's not, you know, the end. And we celebrate the people that have passed as if they're still here every day. We kind of keep them alive. So it, we're, we're not shy about death, like a lot of people here in the Western um, civilization uh, is. So I've always kind of had that my whole life. That's awesome. It's it's like around here the whole thing with it is it's just nobody wants to talk about it. Yeah. Like you said, that. like you're like I seen a ghost. You're like ah oh, that was when. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so, no, I have a lot of friends who are Catholic and and they kind of, I mean out of anyone I know, they kind of get a little more squeamish with things and don't like to delve into that. But a lot of my Mormon friends, they think it's great. <laughs> I'm like, oh, it's something to do. It does sound fun. Yeah, because a lot of us, I mean, Utah's a pretty, um, it's pretty spread out, you know? A lot of us love being out in the outdoors and going to visit these these little places all over the state, so. I understand that. Uh, like I said, we recently did a two-part episode, of, you know, covering the strange happenings and everything of Skinwalker Ranch. You've actually been there, which makes me unbelievably jealous. <laughs> Don't be jealous. What you wish for. That's what I tell people about this place. It's so it's like a double-edged sword. Like 
if you want some of the best evidence of your life or like some of the crazy experiences of your life, then this is the place to go. But at the same time, it like changes you and it haunts you and it doesn't, you know, I just had, I mean, you saw my video the other day where something marked me. Yeah. And I still have that. And I, I don't know what that was about. Um, and that was one of the more tame things that ha have happened there. So it actually isn't even, I wish I could say that's the craziest thing, but it's really not. I mean, um, gosh, I don't even know where to begin. Before you get started on that, that, that thing that Mark you scared me legit to death. <laughs> I'm not joking. You won't be able to see it, but I've got the exact same pattern on my wrist. Oh, right really? Here. Yeah, and it came up pretty much the same way when I was about 15 years old. I was like, what is that? And yeah, it's the, like a scar so, now. It's crazy. The thing that, um, like, your listeners may not know is I was just showing my friend the area of the ranch, and we were driving through. I haven't been in eight years because of something that happened there last time, and I said I would never go back. Um, but... I did, and it's like the, the ranch can, it's it's almost like it listens to you, and it will make whatever you're talking about manifest in one way or another. Um, so it's definitely intelligent, and it's, I wouldn't even call it a haunting. Um, it's so much more than that. I really think there are spots on our earth, in our world, that have rips between different dimensions, yeah. or where things are thinner. and this is definitely what's going on in Skinwalker Ranch. Um, I think there's, I mean, the the sheriff in town has, I know that he had reported seeing like giraffes and gorillas and elephants running through the sagebrush out in Utah, which people who know Utah know that's not even possible. That's not a thing. But the sheriff in town is reporting this and people are seeing like pterodactyls flying in the sky I mean, these are just reports for years that people have been seeing. Um, it makes you wonder what's going on. It um, really does. And um, I am very squeamish with aliens and UFOs. Like, I have no problem investigating ghosts. But if it has to do with UFOs and aliens, which I think this place does, it scares the crap out of me. Like, I, I, don't, look, I don't like it at all. <laughs> but I still go back. It's, I tell people I equate it to like one of those angler fish with the little light that hangs in front of it. It just keeps you coming back and then it eats you. Like it just takes a little chunk of your soul away. <laughs> um, and the people there, the natives there, they don't mess around with, with skinwalkers. You, you know, you can't really even say that word around the locals. It's not something you say. It's very, very... Um, it's a negative connotation and so um their whole thing and my husband's dad grew up in duchene which is the town right next to the ranch and roosevelt he was a sheep farmer and he 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 says he always said you know if you actually believed in what is out here then you wouldn't be looking for it um oh, and a lot of people don't actually know what they're in for when they come out and I feel really bad for them. <laughs> like, stuff hits the fan. Um, but the place is definitely, um, I mean, I'll just, I'll just tell you, like, a quick story. The first time I ever went to the ranch, um, I had a dream the night before. And in the dream, I saw a ridge. And I didn't know anything about the place. I just was asked to go. And I saw a ridge and the moon coming up over this ridge. And I remember just seeing a silhouette of a big uh, black tree. And I could hear the sound of like crunching and ripping of flesh. And in the dream, I get closer to the tree and I see there's this creature and it's probably eight or nine feet tall. And I can't explain what it was other than it looked like a demon of some kind. And it was eating human like, like arms and legs. And it had these red eyes. And I remember looking down on the ground and there were bones scattered all over. And then I woke up just terrified in this dream. Well, the, wow. first, the first night we went to the ranch, my friend uh, Ryan, he owns a bed and breakfast out there, and then he takes people on tours. I guess he just bought the land next to the ranch, so he actually has that now, so I might take a look at that. Um, but he took us to a, a southern vantage point, which is where you go to look 
and you can see down uh, over the ranch. You know, you can't legally be on it or you'd be shot back in the day. They used to have an agency <laughs> with the gun. Seriously, <laughs> like, he'd kill you. Um, so we had to be real careful. Um, but the first time I went to the ranch, I remember, and people have said I'm sensitive, you know, my whole life. But I, I remember just being so sick, I had to go to the gas station and vomit for, like, no reason. And then he took me to the spot. And we um, parked the car, grabbed our chairs to go do a sky watch. And I look over, and there's this tree from my dream. And the ridge is right there from the nightmare. And the moon's coming up. And I look down, and I there's bones everywhere, like everywhere. Wow. Every kind of bone you can think of. Deer, dog, goat, uh, what else, cow. Um, just bones strewn everywhere. And it was in the moonlight, so they were just, like, glowing. I have photos of all of this stuff. Um, and I just, like, you know, what do you, like, what do you do when that happens? Like, it's crazy, Run. Right? You run. <laughs> that was my first experience with the ranch. Like, it already knew I was coming, and it just gave me a little, hi there, how are you? And since then, to this day, if I'm going to the ranch, whether I know I'm going or not, and it's happened many times where I didn't know, I'll have that same demonic sort of evil dream about this creature, which is, I'm guessing, a skinwalker, eating the flesh of people, and it's just horrifying. But it's happened uh, half a dozen times I've had that dream. Um, but it's only surrounding the ranch. And then with the ranch, too, I mean, uh, you'll be sitting telling a story, you know, like I used to live in California. I would ghost hunt at the Queen Mary, which is like my favorite place on earth, the, the yeah. ship. Um, and I remember I would be telling a story about how we heard there's a little girl named Jackie who haunts the pool at, at the Queen Mary, and we heard her talking, and we got some EVPs. And then as I'm telling the story, like we're sitting – looking down on the ranch so there's just a cliff and a drop off there's no way that there could be anyone in front of us but we hear a little girl start uh laughing and saying something in the bushes like in the pitch black darkness and we all heard it and so it it hears what you're saying and then it mimics it um that's the kind of things that go on and the whole land is like this you don't have to go on the ranch you can wow. be 10 miles away. Um, the whole place is just nuts. Um, That's crazy. Yeah. So um, at the end of our last episode, we came up with our conclusions of what we thought it was. And my buddy Reed, that is one of the co-hosts, he thinks that it's an alien, a UFO refueling station. I can, I can get with that. I mean, yeah. it's possible. Well, I do know that my friend who... Um, who owns the bed and breakfast, and he also owns real estate in the area. I know that you're not allowed to dig at all on your properties out there. It's part of the contract when you buy the land, which is kind of weird. That is um, I also hear there's a whole story about the Navajos and the Utes. Do you know this story? No. Um, so I guess the Spanish came in, is what I was told, and they... Um, you know, took captive a lot of the, the Navajo people, I believe. And there are mines in this area, gold mines, and they oh, yeah. took them into slavery and made them uh, mine for gold. And I guess some people say that's the reason that Rob Bigelow, or, you know, Bigelow bought the ranch was because he was trying to find these mines full of gold. And there's proof that this exists, that there are tunnels, with some sort of gold or treasure that's on all of these acres of land. And so they think, and then also in their culture, I think um, it's it's not good to dig in the ground in that area because it's sacred or, or something. So there's a few different reasons they believe, or people believe that you can't dig on the land. Um, after you said it was about gold, I forgot there is a ranch that's adjacent to it, I believe, called the Blind Frog Ranch. I've heard of that. Don't they have a TV show or something? Something like that. Um, 
Tully mm-hmm. was telling me about it, and I, I didn't catch it all, but he said they found Spanish gold. Yeah. Yeah, so that could be a reason, but I don't believe that just because I've seen things with, with my eyes. Um, I mean, I think there's definitely, there could be gold mines out there, but there's, I mean, why would the government be interested in this? Land, exactly. You know? Anytime the government becomes involved in something like that, you're like, eh. <laughs> I, know, I mean, I've been out there in the night, and I, and I live by an air, air Force base, and I live by an Army base. I know what they sound like. And you'll be out there in the night, and you'll hear those sounds coming beneath you. Like, it sounds like there's trucks driving, and the ground is shaking, and it's coming from below. So we've always kind of thought ourselves there's definitely something, some sort of base or something, whether it's the government or alien, um, that's going on beneath the ground. Um, yeah, I think so. That's probably what it is, man. I never even thought about that. They might have a legit base under that now, like they found something. Wow. Yeah, and I've had friends, you know, I. I can't give too many details about different things, but I've, I've got friends who have photographs of areas where they believe the entrances are um, that are kind of caves and stuff where they think things come and go um, that they've showed me photos of. And it looks very possible um, that it could be an entrance to some, you know, sort of base uh, just on the side of these, you know, out, out there in Skinwalker Ranch, there's just ridges, you know, all over and um, it looks like it could be an entry in some of these photos I've seen so it's possible that yeah. is completely possible oh that's I never even thought about that that's that's more than likely what it is. that's what I believe I know now. I'm gonna have to go back <laughs> out this summer this yeah I said I said I would never go back and then I had this happen last month now I'm just, I've got people calling me left and right, like, can you please just go back and tell us more of your stories? And I'm like, can I pull out? Maybe. I, I might. <laughs> I don't know. No, I mean, but I will say I've never feared for my life ever doing anything, you know, ghost hunting, nothing. But out there at the ranch, I've feared for my life. Like, I've felt like something terrible could happen at any moment and I wouldn't be able to do anything. And I don't I'm, like I don't like not feeling in control and something about that place is just different. I understand that. Yeah, definitely something going on.